Now this strategy is just way too fun. Honestly, I just thought about this. So many people are MFing, so many people are bossing. You know, the market is completely weird. And I figured I just want to play around and use a Headhunter TS build, just any normal mapper that has a Headhunter. And I figured, what could Headhunter benefit from? Where can I get a lot of mods? And um, I, I figured out that, honestly, Legion would be amazing with Expedition and Harbinger. Now, as an extra, we also take some Harvest. Now, this strategy, when running it, was just... It's probably not the most profitable thing that you can do right now. I'm pretty sure there's many other things that you can do. But is this fun? Hell yeah. Getting so many rare mobs, getting so many of those extra, you know, um, headhunter buffs. It makes this just so fun. You zoom through these maps so quickly, um, and, and it just grants you nice, consistent loot as well. Um, regarding the Atlas tree, there's not much here that is out of the ordinary, because like I explained, we are taking um, Harvest, Harbinger, Legion, and then as a little extra, we have Expedition. Now, our main focus here is going to be, however, Legion and Harvest. Expedition is an extra thing that we can just take, and Harbinger is another just, you know, extra couple of mobs, couple of portals, couple of things that we can take that benefit from, you know, just us running the maps. Um, so, if I uh, start all the way from the bottom, we have Legion with an additional Legion encounter. The more we have, the better. Um, and the same thing with Legion, we, we don't take Timeless Conflict, I don't think anybody really farms Legion with Timeless Conflict, unless I am misinformed, please let me know if you know anyone that used Timeless Conflict and it was actually better than the normal Legion regarding farming something that can actually fully clear the Legion. Um, then we have Harbinger, obviously additional Harbinger, the Harvest nodes, we have the Expedition with one big boom, Extreme Archaeology, um, thankfully for me and my build, you need to be careful if your build can do this. Sometimes there are um, the what are they called? The, the little pillar things. Um, hold on, <laughs> where is it? Remnants. Yes. Uh, so the the, the remnants um, they can have a mod that can block and brick completely the whole expedition, meaning that you know it can, for example, uh, monsters cannot take chaos damage, monsters cannot take cold damage, monsters cannot take lightning damage, you know stuff like that. So if your build is only like 100% converted into lightning, then you won't be able to clear the all of the mobs if they are you know lightning immune. Um, so thankfully in my build I run Trinity support, meaning that I do lose probably some damage but it's not that much and thankfully due to headhunter I can just kill them with a breeze anyways um, more harbinger uh, cooldown recovery rate currency items all of that um, Legion obviously we will go for the Templar and the Marketh anything else as an extra is great same thing splinters as emblems this is amazing uh, we do also take some altars with us. We don't take the general. I think that the general is just a little bit too tanky. Um, we just want to zoom through the maps, and yes, they do drop some splinters, possibly some emblems, but for the time that it takes to kill them, I mean, yeah, it's, it's all right. Uh, we have one anyways from our scarab. Uh, less blue plants in terms of harvest, same thing here. We want the life force have a 10% chance to be duplicated. Harbinger, chance for a powerful boss. Expedition, chance for logbooks, harvest, chance for a tier 4 and to not wilt. And uh, also we have here more legion chests, more rewards, additional rewards, you know, all of that towards legion. Then we also have expedition, we want more Tujin and Danig. Um, and that's pretty much it. And also we allocate the seventh gate. Why the seventh gate? That is because, if I will show you our sextants, we have legion monsters, uh, just splinters and emblems are duplicated. We have additional Legion Encounter. We have Mysterious Harbinger and additional Currency Shards. We have Life Force duplicated. Now, um, same thing with uh, the Scarabs. We have an additional Legion. We have an additional Expedition to ensure that we have at least two Legions. Then we ensure ourselves an Expedition. Then we add an additional four Harbingers. Then we have some Divination Scarabs, that was just the ones that I kind of had in my inventory. I guess the fourth one is uh, whatever you really want. Um, 
it's like a little extra. You, know, you could possibly switch up the tree a little bit, uh, possibly go for some ambush uh, scarabs and some strong boxes on the tree. You know, it's up to you. Now, um, regarding rolling the maps and uh, going back to the seventh gate, uh, we will take and force harvest on the seventh gate. And if we have 12 maps, and I believe harvest is going to be 10 chaos, something like that. Uh, actually, I don't know because I didn't do it yet. We'll see later. Uh, that will go into our initial investment and our initial cost. Regarding how much I invested into the strategy and stuff like that, I'll just post it here on the screen to make sure to tell you. Um, and besides that, I'm just going to be running these maps and I'll uh, make sure to give you a little compilation of our nicest drops and things I, that, that are going to happen in the map. And that's pretty much it. Later we'll do a breakdown of what was our most profitable thing from all of these maps and what we focused on and well just how much we actually made in, in, in terms of our return on investment. So see you later. So the results are in. It turns out that this was more actually fun than I expected, um, and probably more profit than I expected. Um, unfortunately, Expedition didn't really turn out to be that good and that profitable. We managed to only get some scrap metal and two logbooks, uh, besides essences and some other random currency, and of course all of the other artifacts that we could gather um, to use those uh, the expedition currency that we could just manually use. Um, I divided this uh, a little bit in terms of category, so here we have all of our legion drops, meaning that we have around 63 stacked decks, which is really really cool. And remember, this sample size was for only 12 maps. And I say only because in my opinion 12 maps is not that much to run in bulk. Uh, we did manage to get this many emblems, and now of course uh, according to prices on TFT that are going in at the moment, one set is around two divines, and since we have four full sets, that means we have around eight divines of sets, plus all of these other emblems and fragments. The more we gather, the more we can sell in bulk, the better it is for us. Uh, we did get two different blueprints that were just random drops. We did manage to get nine fortunate cards that was probably due uh, to the fact that I was running this in burial, ch burial chambers and fortunate cards drop in burial chambers. Now, um, there, I also used the, used the Gilded Divination uh, Scarab, meaning that we probably upped our chances a little bit more on that fortunate card, which could just give us more ROI in terms of farming this strategy. Now, um, let's talk about the big money makers, uh, which was Harvest. Uh, we got one Sacred Blossom, which at the moment is going for around 4.2 Divines, which is great. We have Crystallized Life Force, we have 23,000 of it, and if we search here that with the stock size of 23,000, it's selling for around 1 for 1,500, probably. So if we just quickly do the math, we have 23,000 Jews, and we divided that by 1,500. That puts us at a nice 15.3 Divines out of the Life Force. And now the only investment that we put into Harvest is from the Atlas Tree. Two Divines worth of Sextants for the Yellow Juice, which was three Sextants, and that cost me two Divines. And then since I ran 12 maps and it was 12 Chaos each per map, 
that puts us at 144 chaos invested again, which is another divine. So we invested three divines into harvest overall, and we managed to take out a nice 15.3 plus the, let's say, lucky sacred blossom. We're not going to count that uh, of return, which is incredible in my opinion. Now, we also do have in Einhar's Memory of Crystal Prisons, which just is a normal lucky drop, another two divines. We got two raw divines now in terms of Harbinger, five fracturing shards, which puts us at a nice around eight divines. Plus, of course, some annulment orbs, uh, some ancient orbs, and I think we have also Harbinger orb. Yeah, we didn't get that many of them, um, but they're not that expensive. All of this currency is basic bubblegum currency, as you can see, just fusing vol orbs, some uh, scarabs, etc. Now, if we go to our PoE stack, our invest uh, return is around 62 divines, which is a little bit uh, untrue due to the fact that we actually have more due to pulk prices and due to all of that. Uh, the emblems, you know, they're counting it as, you know, um, not as it's supposed to be counted. Also, the incubators, we could probably sell that for a little bit more. Uh, overall, it's just extremely fun to run with, you know, especially if you get Soul Eater, especially if you get so many of these other things uh, on this map. It makes the running just so much easier, so much more fun. Uh, the generals could sometimes stand a problem, but usually... Uh, it wasn't that bad due to the fact of, you know, just having so many headhunter stacks. So if your build can run headhunter, I honestly really highly recommend running a nice build with headhunter and running these strategies. You're going to have so many stacks of those buffs that will make this map just a breeze uh, if your computer can handle it. Because sometimes those frames, when they drop, when you pop that legion, ooh, that can hurt sometimes. But overall awesome strategy. I, I really love it. And I'm probably going to be running uh, a lot more of these maps since it's cheap to go into. The sextants are so cheap. Uh, it's actually funny and it's just a fun way to gather currency. Uh, and I'm just going to continue doing that. You know, the more stack decks you have, the more investment, the, the more you can uh, bulk sell, the more uh, emblems that you have, the more you can bulk sell, the more incubators that you have, the more you can bulk sell. It goes all, all the way there. You know, also fracturing shards, you know, uh, getting five fracturing shards from 12 maps. Lucky, not lucky, not sure. I would say that this is kind of normal. Um, because whenever I was running maps also before, so let's say on a bigger sample size, it was actually quite similar. So besides that, there's nothing much else to say, but run this strategy and have fun. I mean, honestly, it's, it's great. I love it. So anyways, thanks you guys for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Also, for your information, I would like you to join my Discord. The Discord is in the description below. It's all nicely set up finally. I uh, invested a little bit into it just to make sure that we can have a nice place to start growing our community together. So I already have some people there that I uh, that I really appreciate that they, that they joined. We talk to each other daily and I would like you to join too. Uh, so make sure to click that link in the description and see you in the next one.